Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you all to this uh, brand new course on the analytical, spectral and microscopy applications of uh, inorganic compounds and even some nanomaterials mostly based on the inorganic uh, uh, systems. Okay, so uh, first of all let me introduce this course a little bit. Uh, as the title says that it is basically dependent on the analytical techniques which we use routinely spectral techniques which we use routinely and the microscopic techniques which are also routine but not as much nowadays. Uh, nowadays they, these become very uh, much important and uh, the focus of the subject in this is on the inorganic uh, compounds, inorganic materials, nanomaterials etc. So, the idea of this particular course is to bring some kind of a close relation between the uh, subject and the student who is learning reasons are several fold uh, because this is a particularly a course uh, uh, which is studied by all the master students particularly in their second year uh, or second semester third or fourth semester in different depending upon the university where you are studying and uh, also very important for people who are working in industry where they would be basically looking at to analyze these compounds uh, you know characterize their compounds, understand their compounds etc in a routine fashion. So, both for industry and the academia this is going to be an important aspect of it ok. So, therefore, this course is essentially useful for uh, uh, students in the academics particularly the master students and also PhD students because PhD students use for their particular uh, you know analysis of their compounds etc a lot of techniques. There is nothing uh, bound for their because a student who works in the organic chemistry has to know both organic analysis as well as inorganic. A student works in the inorganic chemistry also has to know the analysis of the compounds both of organic type and inorganic type. So, do not draw any kind of a you know boundaries between these kind of things. So, that is what is absolutely essential uh, for students of PhD of uh, not only just first year PhD students who does the coursework, even those PhD students who are in their second year, third year, fourth year, this is useful for all of them all the time during their career. So, uh, parallelly this is also very useful for the in industry there are a lot of uh, uh, R and D labs. In the R and D labs the routine activities to look at uh, purity of the compounds, characterization of the compounds. Uh, uh, sometimes even studying the mechanism of the compounds or reactions. So, therefore, all these require a support of analytical, support of spectroscopy, support of microscopy techniques as well ok. So, uh, uh, let us look at some few points what I mentioned now already just in, in the way that I have uh, put it here. This is a basically you wanted to learn the subject which is relevant to the characterization of inorganic compounds and nowadays uh, even nanomaterials. Wherever required, I will put the examples of the nanomaterials a little bit into those things uh, and most cases not required separately, but wherever required a separate mention I will be showing that too ok. So, what, how, what ways this will help? So, so, this will also provide the ways and means by which one can identify the purity of the compound. See, so how do you get? You get the, your compounds by synthesis. So, when you synthesize there are many things involved in the reaction and then at the end you have a product and the product may be impure, may be pure. So, in order to understand the purity of the compound this is very important and then in some cases you may have even some intermediates are required. When you are required, so you have been doing some kind of a catalytic reaction let us assume that. It goes through various steps. So, there are various intermediates. So, these intermediates have to be identified. So, just like you identify the product 
you can also identify the intermediates as well. So, this will also help in building the mechanistic aspects of that. So, it is not just characterization, most of the times people think the analytical spectral is for just for the characterization, but the characterizations are in various fold uh, uh, in, the, in the manner. So, one of the characterization is to characterize in order to build the reaction mechanisms of some of the systems, uh, some of the catalytic processes or even in a synthesis, sometimes it goes through uh, more than one step, you wanted to identify those steps, so also required. Also routine uh, in the R&D labs of the industry most often or even analytical labs, even the labs which give the certification labs, there are many governmental labs who gives the certification. So, for all of them they require to understand this, how to interpret their uh, analytical results, how to interpret their spectral results, microscopy results etcetera of their compounds of their processes in their routine analysis. So, it is not only for the students of masters, students of PhD, not only even in the industries R and D labs, but there are a variety of R and D labs which are under the government purview, uh, who gives the certification for various materials, they are pure, they are less pure, they are impure, all those kinds of things. Many times you know the materials collected from various sources like for example, from our uh, sections where in the airports they catch certain, certain kind of samples and send it to the labs for evaluation of their purity, for their identification etcetera. I am sure a lot of poor forensic uh, materials. Uh, so, all these kinds of things required. So, for all of them this kind of course whatever I am going to cover in this particular course will be of great help and utility to establish by thing. So, that means this certainly this course is going to be helpful for the students in the academia both masters and uh, PhD students and a lot of uh, scientists, engineers, researchers in the industry and also in variety of other national and other laboratories uh, who are meant for the certification purposes as well. So, I hope that gives a kind of a preamble uh, of the, my uh, course and what is it relevant to. If I missed something mentioning in the previous, based on the previous slide, let us look at the one who all will get benefit. I have already emphasized that the people who gets benefited are the master students because they have a course, not only course, they also do some laboratory work in inorganic chemistry and wherein they make, they synthesize the compounds and they also analyze, they also characterize. So, therefore, this course will also help them not only in their theory course on the characterization techniques, but also in their practical courses of that as well. And then PhD students need to address this routinely on their research problems. So, therefore, this is very useful for those students who are working in that inorganic chemistry, organometallic chemistry, bioinorganic chemistry, biomaterials, nanomaterials, all these kinds of areas. Okay. So, does not mean that the organic chemists do not require because they also use a lot of catalysts, organometallic compounds. They wanted to check before they use them or they want to see how they perform, etcetera. So, all those th kind of things before reaction, after reaction you analyze your this uh, and the catalytic materials. So, is the cat catalyst is, uh, is still active or catalyst has become any passivity in that kind of a thing. Okay. Further, I will be dealing in this particular course is a slightly different manner. I will uh, be giving some basic principles, but I will also be addressing quite a few examples as well as some problem solving methodologies. So, that would be uh, one of the new features that I will be building into my course as opposed to some of the courses that may be available online etcetera in that. So, in effect this course will be absolutely useful for the students, scientists, researchers, analytical chemists, engineers etcetera who are working in industries to solve their routine problems related to the compounds, materials and uh, uh, and to those who are working in the broad area of uh, catalysis. So, catalysis is a process, catalyst is a compound um, in both the things. So, you need to understand the catalyst, you need to understand the process. For both of them, this is very uh, useful. So, therefore, it is very highly beneficial to the people who are working in the industry. I have already emphasized to you in the uh, uh, earlier 
a few a couple of minutes ago about the utility of this for those lab, national laboratories who are involved in uh, giving a certification of the compounds, compound purities, compound whatever the natures, etc., all of those kinds of things too. Okay, so in effect, this particular contents of this particular course is highly uh, relevant, directly useful for the master students of the science branch with a greater uh, you know, relevance to that of the chemistry, but partly to others as well. Even physics, a lot of people work on materials, etc. Of course, environmental scientists will also work on a lot of materials. Some engineers will also work on materials. The me mechanical and metallurgical people work on materials. So, all of these people would be benefited. All of those uh, students at the master level, students at the uh, doctoral level, all of them will be benefited both in their uh, academic teaching courses as well as the research. Uh, so, therefore, it is useful for scientists, chemists and academicians uh, uh, across the uh, you know various fields uh, particularly pertinent to the, uh, the chemical sciences including those working in the industry area. Now, I hope uh, this has given you the highlights of what I shall be covering, uh, what I am addressing not covering, I will give you in a minute what I will be covering. So, whatever the course, the lectures that I am going to speak will address to these aspects, will be beneficial to these things. So, I hope that part is clear. So, if that part is clear, we can move to the next part, what exactly would be covering, just uh, after looking at one uh, few of the points that I talked to you just now. So, this uh, the, how I would like to uh, cover the uh, courses, uh, the course lectures. The course lectures uh, as the title of the course goes, there are three major streams are there in this, in this particular course. So, one is analytical methods, another is spectral or spectroscopy methods, the third one is microscopy and of course, includes the diffraction other things as well, a light scattering all of those kinds of methods will be under the microscopy kind of a overall broad coverage of that. So, essentially in this course you are going to see three major sections, three major portions of which maximum time will go for the spectral spectroscopy. Why? You will see just in a minute because the number of techniques that are relevant for these inorganic compounds and the nanomaterials are much, much more than the analytical and microscopy techniques, but they are also equally important. Okay. So, uh, let us take uh, one on the, so analytical basically includes analyzing the uh, molecules, analyzing the compounds, analyzing the species in terms of the content, in terms of some nature also, chemical nature, physical nature, all those kinds of things. But when you do some kind of a synthesis, you always expect synthesis not just gives the product alone, product plus something. So, whenever you do some kind of a reaction, you carry out, suppose you are carrying out <laughs> Uh, a reaction. So, why you carry out? You make, uh, you wanted to synthesize the compound. So, synthesize compounds. So, this requires uh, uh, a large number of uh, uh, starting materials, processes, methods and experimental techniques. So, that gives, this will always lead to the product uh, plus some uh, other entities which we call uh, as impurities. So, so therefore, one needs to uh, separate this from the main compound versus uh, and some of the techniques I will be covering in this very uh, briefly and very quick to understand the principle to understand a little bit of application. Though it is not a major aspect of this particular course but needs to cement the whole thing together, so that is required. Another analytical one is the thermal techniques. So, there are a number of thermal techniques are there, thermogravimetric analysis, differential thermal analysis, differential scanning calorimetry and isothermal titration calorimetry. So, these are all thermal techniques where one can understand the, uh, the, the substance loss, what is the material that is lost or what are the transformations occurring in the material when the, when the energy is uh, absorbed when, or the energy is liberated. All those processes 
can be uh, can be gazed from the thermal techniques also very recently in the past 15 20 years very new techniques have come when you take a and b when you add b to the a what kind of a thermodynamic changes occur between the mixture in the mixture of a and b therefore such kind of particularly useful for uh, large molecular uh, species like uh, proteins enzymes and uh, uh, nucleic acids those kind of things because they interact with other proteins they interact with small molecules they interact with the drugs they interact with the inhibitors all kinds of things so very highly useful so i'll be covering all those another topic that i will take up under this analytical is the electrochemical techniques particularly based on the cyclic voltammetry and a few other voltammetric related techniques uh, that is highly useful for the inorganic materials even nanomaterials the magnetism is an absolute and important topic which i will be covering in the first uh, uh, part of the my course which is under the analytical part uh, is the the magnetic uh, aspects the magnetic aspects paramagnetism diamagnetism of course and more importantly and relevantly ferromagnetism and antiferromagnetic aspects how the properties of the materials of the magnetic properties of the materials can be measured can be used can be calculated all of those as i said in my lectures i will not only have some basic principle and the relevance but also have some examples maybe some uh, problem solving as well so these are some topics broadly i'll be covering under the analytical then coming to the spectroscopy as i said we have a huge number of spectroscopy uh, techniques like absorption spectroscopy that is nothing but the electronic absorption most often people use the word uv it is not a correct term uh, many times uh, you don't use just the UV alone, you use visible also. So, it is a UV visible spectroscopy because you can't easily separate these two uh, in the electronic transitions and this is the best term is the absorption, electronic absorption. Absorption means electronic absorption spectroscopy. So, when it is uh, absorbed, the energy is absorbed and the electron is excited. Obviously, the excited state is not uh, going to be permanent and that will lead back to the ground state and when it comes to the ground state there are various ways by which the excess energy can be dissipated removed so that kind of a technique and if a part of that energy comes in the form of uh, light so that light part is measured by this uh, emission spectroscopy and this is a very important technique and you might have heard something called fluorescence so the fluorescence technique is you is being used now very elaborately in every facet of life every facet of life it is being used it is very easy to measure uh, okay so that is also i'll be covering then electron spin uh, resonance electron paramagnetic resonance so most often in organic systems that you will have if you have a uh, unpaid uh, or a radical then you will have electron spin resonance and if you have a unpaired electron in a d o d system then you have or an F system uh, which are nothing but inorganic uh, materials where you can study that uh, unpaired electron spin it could be one unpaired there could be two unpaired there could be three unpaired because those who have studied the coordination chemistry will know that is not necessary there should be only one unpaired in inorganic systems okay so therefore one can study that as well and the mass spectrometry uh, mass spectrometry there are different techniques there i'll be dealing with all of them and uh, uh, it is not only just to look at the mass of uh, that particular molecule which is synthesized, but when you are doing some kind of a reaction or kind of a transformation is happening, if A and B joins together, the mass will change, and if A disintegrates, mass will uh, decrease. So, all of these kinds of things can be monitored, and therefore, mass spectroscopy is going to be very uh, useful and will be covered. Mass boy technique is very specialized and only useful for only a few nuclei, and of which the ones which we will be restricting ourselves is for the iron because of the source availability is is very limited so therefore we'll be covering the mosbauer spectroscopy in terms of the iron compounds and x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy this can be used for organic molecules organometallic inorganic nanomaterials everywhere where you can look at the binding energies of different uh, uh, of types of orbitals in that particular center or atom present in that particular molecule or a lattice or a solid because there is environment will vary 
as a result of the environment variation that is chemical variation surrounding that particular atom or ion its uh, uh, basic uh, binding energies will vary and that will give you information uh, what is the kind of a uh, oxidation state or, uh, or valence state that this exists and that will give you a lot of chemical information on that too. Fourier transformer in infrared spectroscopy obviously is for the vibrational spectroscopy I am sure everyone has heard in the past as well and which will give you about the vibrations. So, you can use certain certain uh, groups chemical moieties whose vibrational frequencies are quite well uh, fixed. So, therefore, one can utilize these in that as well. So, therefore, we will look at that. Raman spectroscopy is similar to that as that is a vibrational but the frequencies which you find the vibrational modes which you find in Raman would be different from those of the infrared which I will explain you later. So, both of these are concerned with the vibrational spectroscopy in this. So, then we will look at uh, nuclear magnetic resonance when it comes to the nuclear magnetic resonance generally people will think that it is only proton NMR, but there is a huge amount of other kind of NMR a possible particularly about 40 plus nuclei are active in the periodic table of which many of them are under comes under the broad category of the inorganic. So, this is also referred as the paramagnetic kind of a, uh, NMR uh, is there where we will look into some examples and how it can be utilized. Other technique which is used very specialized uh, mostly into uh, hot core inorganic uh, complexes particularly those complexes present in proteins like uh, proteins and enzymes like like inorganic enzymes where using this technique that is extended x-ray absorption fine structure spectroscopy uh, EXAFS extended x-ray absorption fine structure spectroscopy. So, this fine structure spectroscopy absorption spectroscopy x radiation will give you the immediate suppose if you have a molybdenum which is let us say connected to some sulfur oxygen or nitrogen kind of ligand this information that you can get. So, that is will give you the mainly the primary coordination and that will talk to you about the groups present the geometry many kind of informations. Uh, so, therefore, you will get the primary coordination uh, uh, geometry parameters. So, it is also referred as the metric parameters. Metric parameters like bond length, bond angles these kind of things. So, the metal to uh, oxygen, metal to nitrogen, metal to sulfur these kind of distances and the oxygen, metal, oxygen, oxygen, metal, nitrogen these kind of angles these are the things which are embedded into this particular information. So, all of these as you can see a huge number of spectroscopy techniques are there and this will be covered in this course. Of course, the examples that I take will be the inorganic uh, complexes and the analytic uh, and the nanomaterial kind of thing. So, what else I will be covering in this? As I said, there are three uh, major streams analytical, spectroscopy, and microscopy kind of things. So, what kind of techniques under the microscopy? Diffraction techniques. So, both the X ray diffraction, electron diffraction, because a lot of electron diffraction is a part of the microscopy, and the powder diffraction, single crystal diffraction, they are under the X ray diffraction. So, both of these uh, we will try to look at and then their utility. Then we have electron microscopies, the scanning electron microscopy, which will uh, talk to you about the surface characteristics of the material, atomic force microscopy, which will talk to you about the, uh, the, the, the atoms or the molecules sitting at the surface interacting with the exterior, those things. And then one can look at uh, the little depth, the thickness of the films, all those kinds of things. The transmission obviously the electron passes through the material therefore, you can look at the structural features of that and uh, scanning tunneling is, uh, uh, is you use a kind of a combination of transmission with the scanning together scanning tunneling microscopy 
which will talk to you very well about the full structure of the material provided you have a good resolution in that. Then comes this very important is the fluorescence microscopy. Some of the materials you can use the fluorescence property to map the whole system. That is what microscopy will basically map the region, map the system in that region. So, what is there, what is not there, etc., can be identified. That is in any microscopy. Then, confocal microscopy, again using the laser, confocal laser microscopy, where highly useful for the systems like uh, using biological system, cell based systems, all of these are very highly useful in that. Okay. So, and then one another thing which is very well suited for the cell science is a flow cytometry. So, fluorescence activated cell sorting, this is referred as the a technique called FACS FACS. Okay. Fluorescence activated cell sorting and this is by the uh, fluorescence method. Cells are sorted, they are live, they are uh, different shape, the shapes of the cells, the whether they are live or dead all these kinds of things can be can be separated out using their fluorescence property and when they are flowing through a solution. That means, you focus uh, light or laser light and then try to look at that and count them. So, that is what you count. So, that is. Uh, so, these are uh, the some of the things that I will be covering under the microscopy uh, kind of a techniques and in the last few lectures uh, of this. I will be focusing on the overall highlights of that and how I have traveled through entire course and then how do we connect uh, with this. Okay. So, these are the three major streams that I am talking about and uh, so, what I do is in case of each of these stream and in case of each of these subtopic that I have talked to you now shown to you now, typically I will uh, take initially some kind of a basic principle some kind of a relevance of that, some kind of a how diverse is the topic and then some examples to understand that phenomena, some uh, problems if required etcetera and uh, examples in terms of explaining the characterization, explaining the details, applications all of these. So, this is the kind of a methodology that I will be using. So, when you say analytical spectroscopy, uh, these are basically divided into two aspects to parts which is the uh, atomic type and the molecular type too. So, atomic and molecular. Okay. So, atomic I will be covering very little uh, and of course, molecular as uh, said. Uh, uh, so, in this the techniques of uh, uh, destructive type and non destructive type. Okay. So, destructive type means where the material or sample uh, is being converted into something cannot be used that can be sort of basically broken down uh, in the other case intact. So, non destructive is uh, intact. So, intact material and then uh, thing. So, when you take a material and then or a molecule and put into some system and then convert into atom atomization obviously, you cannot rebuild back. So, that means, where it cannot be re reusable. Sometimes, you take some compounds and mix with something else and when you mix at the end of your character study, you may be able to uh, separate it then it is reusable, you may not be able to separate it then it is not reusable. So, you can have techniques of destructive and intact primarily in the atomic uh, spectroscopy there you atomize and then use it. In the atomic uh, spectroscopy you basically look at the quantitative estimation of the element and follows it basically follows the concentration more the concentration more the signal is and that is how it is. So, it is a very straightforward technique. So, we can be easily understood. So, being a quantitative. So, I will be very touching basic things uh, in that in the next class uh, uh, that one, but will not go too many details in that because it is straightforward uh, kind of thing. I will also be taking enough amount of uh, uh, thing I talk to you about the thermal analysis. Though it is sample is destroyed, but it is not destroyed, it is converted into another material which can be further understood. Then based on that you can build the mechanism of that particular compound. So, all those methods under the analytical also I will be covering in this too. So, what I have uh, given you in this particular class essentially is what is my course, 
what I'm, I'm going to focus on this, who will be getting benefited with this, particularly the, the, the students of master's, PhD, and the uh, researchers in various labs, industries, uh, and certification centers, all of those kinds of things. And then what I should be talking about, the three streams, analytical, spectral, and microscopy, and the, uh, in that uh, atomic and molecular spectroscopy, I'll be spending very briefly only on atomic, rest are all on molecular spectroscopy, molecular uh, characterization kind of things. So for this, uh, uh, and so in the next lecture, we will talk, start talking with some uh, methods, uh, particularly initially we'll finish the analytical techniques of which atomic absorption, then followed by thermal, followed by electrochemical, followed by magnetic, and then we will go into the spectroscopy techniques of that. Thank you very much.